Welcome back to Exponential Africa. Here we are in this magnificent city of Prague and we are fortunate enough to have Carlo van der Weyer who is the ex-vice president of TomTom Tom Navigation. Uh, he is the Singularity U faculty on mobility and probably one of the leading experts in mobility in the world. Carlo, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. So do you want to tell us a little about, I mean, mobility is, is quite a buzzword at the moment because it is changing so fast and then we're seeing yeah. this, these, these companies come out of nowhere and become these massive uh, unicorns. Yeah. What is it all about? What's going on with this autonomous vehicles and that sort of thing? All this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah maybe it's, it's typically because in any industry where digitization happens, there you see this, this popping up, etc. Right? You see this disruption coming in. It's inherently what happens when digitization takes place. And actually, if you see it, the cars are computers on wheels. And also the organization of mobility is, is held by the internet. So we have a kind of internet of vehicles. And because of that, you, it's, it's a rule that disruption comes very fast. And, and you mentioned, for instance, self-driving vehicles, which is just one of the many disruptions that we can expect. But indeed, vehicles taking over every now and then, or maybe the complete ride, which some people dream of, but certainly taking over every now and then, that's kind of a disruption because at one thing, they can take over when you're about to make an accident. So it can lead to much safer vehicles. How far away are we from autonomous vehicles? You know, there's been a lot of speculation around this. I, I'm driving around with a vehicle that takes over every now and then. For instance, in a traffic jam, which is the easiest way to take over because there's not a lot of unpredictable things happening there. And I cannot do without this function. I would never be able to, I'm not going to buy a car without this function anymore because it takes the most nasty bits out of driving. But this vehicle certainly cannot do without me. It's a very poor driver if you just leave it alone. Certainly when you would leave it, release it here in, in city traffic in Prague with all these unwritten rules, that's the that's thing that's going to be very far away. So What's fully self-driving vehicles. Yeah, my, my vehicle is a Tesla. I, in the Netherlands, you're helped by the government to drive Tesla. So it's, it's, I'm, I'm not bragging here. It's relatively <laughs> cheap to drive a Tesla in the Netherlands. But yeah, yes, it, it's, it's, it's superb in taking over some of the nasty bits of driving, like making accidents, parking itself, or dr doing the tr driving in a traffic jam. My congestion problem is solved. Not that the congestion is gone, but my problem is solved. I don't have a problem with convenience. it. It's convenience. I, I can work during a traffic jam, so I don't mind if the traffic jam is a little bit longer. It's just more efficient. So that's that's the thing. That's a disruption that, that you're solving the traffic jam, not by solving the jam, but by solving the problem that you have with it. And these are things, these disruptions come up. You see also in the organizational side with Uber bringing, bringing uh, demand and supply perfectly together. Uh, but yeah, with a lot of problems on the other side, but that's always with disruption, it comes in and it, it disrupts the current business. Yeah. And I mean, we're going to see, I mean, I mean there's, a, there's a huge race to this autonomous vehicle. Yep. Who, who is going to be the winning, winning platform, winning car company, winning computer? You know, it's everyone sort of gunning to see what's happening. I mean, isn't yeah. even Apple's in, into this yes. race? Even Apple is making a car, the secret project at this moment. The fact that they come into this, Apple is a company with a huge amount of uh, uh, profit, uh, so their, their, their gross profit is, is tens of percentages, and now they step into this automotive world where you only have one or two percent of profit, you know, this is very marginal business, yet they want to step into it, because at this moment what these vehicles are doing, they are a, a bomb full of data, they have cameras all around, they know what happens if you have access to one or two percent of the vehicles, then you know everything around you don't have to put any sensors on your streets anymore because these cars know everything and that's of course yeah. where, where why apple and google want to own this car because of the data this produces that's that's the next disruption layer that the that the data of a car might be worth more than it costs to drive the vehicle well wow, so then you're going to be that. driving for free as long as you give away your I, data it might, I don't think we're gonna be exactly there, but that it's going to be much, much cheaper, mainly because of elect electrical drive, because a, a, a car is so less complex if it has an electrical drive. It has thousand parts less, etc., and it, it doesn't need any maintenance, etc. So it's gonna be very cheap to drive electric, maybe in due course so cheap that the data that the car produces might be worth more. So like your, all your Google services, you pay with your privacy, actually. This is, this is the, new, the new reality also yeah. for mobility. 
I mean, it's so exciting. And I mean, just autonomous vehicles is one step into the future it of is, mobility. It is. There's going to be many more uh, steps into the future. That's a very good remark because it's only one thing of disruption. And everybody talked about the self-driving because it's a very thrilling and exciting thing. But, but actually what happens in the meantime is that, that our vehicles are going to get much, much, much safer. And, and that's, a, that's the biggest problem. All the accidents that happen at this moment taking away so many lives. And also the economical costs of, of all these accidents, it's, it's huge. So we have to first work on that one to get vehicles safer. And today, 60 to 70% of the accidents that happen could have been prevented with technology that's already on the shelf. Wow. So we have to get more technology into these cars to make the vehicles safer. They're gonna be much cleaner. There, so, so all the problems that were there with vehicles are, are going to be solved. I have a kind of a very positive and, and, and optimistic view on that one. That's and, that's really a, and that's gonna be cheaper and it's gonna be more comfortable. And these are much bigger disruptions actually than only the self-driving, which is just one element. And then they're gonna take off from the ground into the sky. Yes. If they can, the problem with that one is, of course, we always dreamt of flying. That's if you go back 200 years and you see the paintings of the future, there are already people dreaming of individual flying with wings or with rotors or what have you, or with rockets on your on your back. That's that's a dream of human beings to have the individual flying. I hope one day we're going to get there, maybe with drones, but they're, they're kind of noisy, so I don't know. But let's hope they come with a solution. But this is this is the thing, this disruption, and therefore I'm. I'm always excited to also go to Africa because there's a specific thing there. Uh, the same happened to India. I've been with the Minister of Transport advising him because they can leapfrog a lot on mobility. Because to my point of view, smart mobility, for instance, is a are very smart cars that are going to be there, but they don't need a very intellectual or very intelligent infrastructure. So you can save a lot on, on spending on your infrastructure because the cars are going to solve most of the problems. This goes for traffic management with all kind of signs aside of the road so they don't bother too much because the cars know better where to go to. Same for public transport. You see now all these systems coming up like, like Uber, but also with buses, etc., to have a fully demand-driven, very flexible solution for public transport. And that's much closer to the public transport with small buses that is now being used in Africa than these very big, heavy, tram-alike, train-alike, heavy-duty transport systems that are used in Europe. So actually, I think there's such a huge potential for leapfrogging. But that's all we have time for today. Thanks so much. Hope you enjoyed this episode and we will catch you next on Exponential Africa. Thanks, Carlo. Thank you.